so, so, so excited uh, to be here today. So welcome if you're on the live stream and if you're watching a recording, I love you just as much. Hey, thank you so much for all the support. It's great to see so many people giving me the thumbs up and commenting in the chat box and, and everything else. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about how we can get owned. In society, we seem to be completely owned by what we resist. In fact, it was programmed into us. I don't know about you, but I didn't grow up around people who loved their day. Most people that I grew up around, they, they had a real negative uh, time that they were somehow hoping in the future that they would overcome. And it felt like they were in a war. They were in a battle against having to have a job or to go to work or to, you know, have the right health. Who was around people that it felt like life was a war or a struggle? The problem is, is whatever you go into war against, it has to stay there. It has to stay alive. In fact, it owns you. Think about the things we've gone into war against, the war on drugs, the war on terrorism, the war on feeling good, the war on the war. We're always in this battle. And the problem with that is that because you're focused on overcoming it, it has the power. So you don't have the power. What you are resisting, what you're focused on has the power. So a lot of us, we have a war on failure. Give me a thumbs up if that's you. It's like failure can't exist. If that's you, then I want you to know your fear of failure owns you. Some of us have a war on being judged. We have a war. We don't want to be judged. And so that's what owns us. For me, I had this war going. I resisted ever being told that I was lazy. I created programs at a young age that being lazy was a bad thing. And so the worry or the fear of being judged or being lazy or not achieving owned me. And, and this is true. I see a lot of people, they're in a job or they, they hey, Cara, good to see you. I just saw your message. Uh, I see people, they are, they're, they're in a job, right? And they go, you know what? I'm sick of doing this. I'm sick of working so hard. So, so I'm going to create something new. And since I'm going to create something new, I'm going to create a business or I'm going to start a multi-level marketing thingy. I'm going to create something new. What happens, though, is because they had to only create that by avoiding or getting away from something they are owned by this so they go to create their business but they really didn't want to be doing anything difficult they didn't like to have to work hard that's what started i'm sick and tired of working i want to create a business that gives me freedom so as that's what they're avoiding anytime they're in this business and they have to do something that doesn't look like freedom well guess what they can't do it and their business ends up looking a lot like their job in fact, it ends up having more stress. And so they go back to a job. And this is oscillating. This is oscillating. Same with the war that we can have on our own personal body. You know, I've got too much fat on my body, they say. I don't look the way they have a war on it. They resist. They resist that. That's not what I want. But that's what owns them. They get owned by their dislike of their body. So maybe they start you know, losing weight and looking great and then, but it owns them. They, they're never able to just enjoy. You see, what you resist ends up owning. It becomes your master. You give, you give your power to it. You become the slave of what it is that you resist. And I see this consistently in success circles and personal development. People are saying, you know, I want to, I want to make all this money. Why? Because then I'll be free. But then what will you do? Then what will you do? I don't know, but I'll figure it out when I get there. I promise what will happen, it happened to me, is when you get there, you'll still be there. Having a war on not having enough freedom. But this time it will look like, well, life is boring. What am I supposed to do now? So you'll start a new project and you'll keep on doing different things. You see? Hmm. Whatever you have a war on owns you. Whatever you are going to try to solve owns you. And this is a big thing. We all worship something. We're all in worship of something. And, 
And I can see it when I read people's goals and, I, and they say, oh, Chris, you know, I need to make more money or I've got better health or I've got to have this. And I say, well, what if you didn't have to? They say, no, I can't. They are not able to accept the opposite. They're not able to accept failure. They're not able to accept being overweight. They're not able to accept it. They say, how could I accept it, Chris? I say, because then you're not owned by it. Once you accept that you can lose a game, then you can win. Who agrees? Give me a thumbs up on this video. Give me a like or give me a comment if you agree. By the way, it really helps if you give thumbs up and comment. It tells uh, it tells YouTube that this was a good video and they like to they like it when people do good videos. So appreciate you guys doing that. I know it seems like a trivial thing, but the more of those that are done, the more people see this. So I do appreciate a comment and a thumbs up. See, if you want to win in sports, there's a big difference between playing to win and just trying to avoid losing. Very different focus. I was watching the tennis last night. The Australian Open's on right now. And you saw one player, he's just trying not to lose. The other guy's winning, going for it. The guy going for it sometimes misses. But he ends up winning the whole match because he's focused on winning, not just trying to just chip it back and everything else. See, what you, what you want to avoid... What you resist owns you. And so I want to ask you, what could you not allow to happen? Thanks, Vicky. Thanks, Carl. What, what, what could you not allow to happen? Is it failure? Is it being lazy? Is it being judged? My truth is, is once you allow yourself to completely be okay with that possibility, it loses all its power instead of pushing it like a pendulum. So you push away failure. Guess what? comes back to you. I can't fail, comes back to you. I can't be broke, comes back to you. I can't be lonely, comes back to you. I can't fail, comes back to you. I can't judge, comes back to you. What you resist owns you. See? Instead of holding on to it and saying, you know what, well, I'm completely fine with failure because I am I know my worth. I know my value. I'm completely fine being overweight. I love myself anyway. I'm completely fine with this. Until you say, I'm okay with this. In fact, I want this. I want to still love myself when I'm overweight and single. I want to still feel abundant when I broke. I want it. I want that freedom. It's only when you go towards what you're resisting and completely can accept, own it, and have it that you dissolve all its power. There's no energy. It's like pushing a kid on a swing. You're pushing a child on a swing. You push. If you don't push, the, the swing's going to stop you got to push. you got to give it energy. So if you don't push against it, there's no energy in it. Who, who's getting this? What you resist owns you. What you resist completely owns you. And the amount of times we hear of successful people and they're only creating success to get away from something. What happens is they create success and guess what? This is still always there. There's so much tension. They're holding it all together. Then we hear crazy stories of people dying or committing suicide or losing it or whatever it is. What you resist is your master. You have given it power. You are saying, I'm less powerful than the fear of failure. Failure is more powerful than me. You see, you're saying you're giving the power to self-judgment. You're giving the power away. So you just got to say, you know what? I'm fine with it. In fact, I'm not just fine with it. I would love for that to happen because then I'll be able to truly experience abundance. I'd love to lose it all because then I would be able to know that I'm truly abundant. I would love that. And when you get to that point, when the resistance dissolves, that is when you're truly entering a place that I call the wizard's gate. The wizard's gate. The wizard's gate is when you're in no resistance and no desire. See, most desires are just masked resistance. Most desires are masked resistance. Oh, I want to make more money. No, you actually just don't want to be broke. You don't have a love for making money. Oh, I just want to have a relationship. No, you actually just don't want to be single. See, a lot of desires are masked resistance. They're actually got an opposing resistance. And that is what keeps us trapped. Because we're trying to avoid this, as we're going for it, we're not actually going towards the win. We're not going towards financial abundance. So we get to 100 grand and then we say, oh, well, I'm not broke anymore. So we stop. And then in the act of stopping, bang, we lose it all because we weren't going towards it. So you know when you're going for something, not away from something, 
because you're eternally motivated. You're going to keep on going for it. For example, I had someone message me and they said to me, Chris, if you've got so much freedom and you're so in love with your life, why do you keep doing videos? Why do you keep doing it? <laughs> why do you keep doing, doing it? <laughs> and I said, because a painter's got to paint. Musicians got to play music. Michael Jordan had to play basketball. Birds got to fly. And this Chris Duncan has to share the magnetic mind method. It's just what I do. It's who I am. It's not because I'm trying to get away from anything. It's not It's not because I'm trying to go, you know, I'm not trying to solve it. I'm just doing it. I'm just in it. And you guys can feel it. You see, I, I had this mentor. Oh, I still have this mentor. He's an amazing guy. He, uh, he has a $230 million business. Too. He paid me more than that. And it was always interesting to me because I wondered why every time he wanted to start something, he always had to make money from it. The old me said, dude, you got $230 million. Like, surely you can just do coaching, you know, without charging for it. <laughs> and then I realized he's an entrepreneur. He just does things to, and, and those things he charges for. That's who he is. He's not going to listen after being so focused on creating profitable businesses, all of a sudden go, yep, yeah, now I'm completely different and do something different. That's just who he is. It's what he does. That's him. That's his joy. That's his flow. That's his, you see. And so this is, this is the big point today. If you resist it, it's got you. If you resist being called lazy, if you resist, uh, you know, sitting on the couch, if you resist it, it owns you. If you resist going to the gym, that's what owns you. Whatever you resist, whatever you desire, you're owned by it. Does that make sense? you got to get yourself down, uh, down, down, down into the wizard's gate. When you're in that wizard's gate, when you're in your true no desire, no resistance, true place, you don't need to create anything because it's not going to change you. That's when you truly become a master powerful creator. Who agrees with that? It's such an interesting thing. I asked myself this question. I said, if I became a billionaire, what would I do every day? And I realized that the billionaire question is, or the, or the super successful question is, what would I do even if I had all the money in the world? What would I actually do every single day if that was my reality? And I realized that there is a perfect average day. There's a perfect day that you would do no matter what, whether you have the money, don't have the money, whether you're single or, or overweight or you've got your perfect body. There's a perfect day for you. And that's more important. If you're not living that perfect day in the, in the structure, the way that you would live it, that's your first creation because that's when you are the pure creative force. And here's what I want to let you know. When you take your power back, it's the moment when you're no longer trying to get away from things or towards things. You take your power back. You say, I'm 100% happy with today. I'm 100% happy with where I am. If I die tomorrow, I'm good. When you get to that place with, without giving the power away to a relationship or a better looking body or more people who follow you on YouTube or more this or more that, when you, when you get out of that, that is when you get into the vortex of pure creation because you no longer are trying to create to improve yourself. You're just creating for the joy of it. You're just saying, I just want to make lots of money, but I'll be the same. I'll do my same day. And so that was my answer to this person. <laughs> I said, because that's me. That's what I do. This is what I do. I have a perfect day. It includes inspiring as many people to become a powerful creative force in their life. That's what it includes. It includes sharing the hermetic principles and the wisdom that allowed me to be able to create some results. That's what I do. So that's my question for you. Can you find a place of no resistance, no desire? And can you step out of being owned by the things that you resist? Good questions, I think. I hope that you enjoyed this. Hey, thank you so much for sharing this video out if you feel like people need to, need to hear it, they need to see it. Thanks for hitting the uh, thumbs up button and leaving a comment. It really helps Facebook, uh, sorry, YouTube, uh, to, to get this out to more people because they see that people like it. So thank you for doing that. I'm planning on doing as many of these daily downloads as possible, so I appreciate your questions, uh, even ones that inspire a whole video like this. So 
Appreciate you. Love you. Be magnetic today. Subscribe to this channel. Share the video. Do all those things. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you sometime tomorrow, I think. Bye for now.